Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Each week, our hosts will be interviewing local, regional, and national business leaders to give you an inside peek into how they lead their business to success in the ever-competitive business climate. Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Today, I have three-time, now three-time guest on the podcast here by special request from John Kyle, who has also been on the show previously. If you haven't checked out that episode, go back and check it out. But this episode is dedicated to Mr. John Kyle and everybody else, of course. I'm, I'm teasing you, John. Um, but he actually asked me, uh, John is my friend, and he asked me if we would do an episode on the rising interest rates and what that means for the housing market. So I brought on today Marilyn Ackerman, who is a Colorado real estate agent, mortgage broker, and entrepreneur who for the last three years has achieved a ranking in the top 1% of 2,400 plus real estate agents in Home Smart Realty Group in Colorado. That's right, in the top 1% of 2,400 plus. That's no joke. She is a certified negotiations expert has been a real estate agent since 20, uh, 2011, a mortgage broker since 2020, and a landlord for over a decade, where she owns and manages her own portfolio of rental properties. She also recently launched her own YouTube channel called Greater Boulder Longmont Colorado Homes, which people go to for home buying and selling tips, as well as news about the local and national real estate market. Marilyn, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lance. It's such a pleasure to have you back on. Uh, so uh, let's get into interest rates because that's the whole goal of this is I wanted to unpack it. The Fed finally raised interest rates a quarter of a point. They keep talking about maybe another quarter point every quarter uh, throughout the year. Um, and Peter Schiff, Peter Schiff on Friday just said that he's thinking they're going to be at about 2% overall or you know two total points is, is the way to think about it by the end of the year, um, which has kind of everybody freaking out because the higher the interest rates, the more expensive it is to borrow. Et cetera, et cetera. So, a question to you, Marilyn, is uh, why are interest rates so important to the housing market? Right. Well, as you just said, so interest rates affect uh, how much people's payments are when they're buying with a loan. So it it definitely affects people, their bottom line and their budget every month of of how much they can afford for a house. And of course, for investors, it affects them too, and it affects how much their payments are as well. Yeah, it affects everybody, right? So. It, like all of a sudden, um, I don't know if you have any numbers or anything like that, but uh, I guess that's the overall question is like how dramatic can even just, like are you seeing right now, since you are somebody who does um, who, who does mortgage, uh, as a mortgage broker, like what does even just a quarter of a percent do for the market right now? Like how much does that actually increase mortgage rates? Uh, a quarter of a percent. Um, because it's not just a quarter, right? I mean, that's the Fed lending out money at a quarter of a rate of percent more mm -hmm. to the local banks, but then the banks have to make the local banks then have to make their own money off of that. Mm -hmm. So it's more than a quarter, isn't it? Right. So, well, let me give you the stats for how much rates have gone up recently, Perfect. and maybe this will answer it. Because so over the past three months, mortgage rates have risen one and a half percentage points. From um, what to what then? Oh, so so now they're at about 4.75 and th so they would have been at 3.25 uh, just right, just 3 months ago. So this is a real a real shock for people who um how much did you say so 4.75? Yeah, no. Now a 30-year fixed is about 4.75 for someone with good credit. Yeah. And to put that in like total perspective, if you think about it, there's a lot of folks that I know that refinance their existing mortgages um, during the height of the pandemic down to like 2.75 type of stuff. So yeah. that's actually a lot of points. That's two. Yeah. That's basically two whole points up since the pandemic. Oh, absolutely. The the right. Yeah. So it makes a big difference in what people can afford. And uh, it is making a big difference in also the amount of mortgage applications, they're down about 9% from one year ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. So that, so there is, there are, you know, slightly, you know, 9% less uh, applications. Um, and, you know, so mortgage rates are on course to surpass 5%. Um, and we were at about 5%. Um, well, this is, so more, we were at about 5% in 2011. Um, and so, the history of this is that, um, well, 
Well, well, actually, let me project into the future sure. first. So what, what analysts are saying is that, you know, mortgage rates, uh, as long as they stay under about 6%, then we shouldn't see any kind of um, slowdown in the increase of prices. So we think that... Keep going. I was just going to look up something that uh, John sent me a little fact, and I wanted to run that by you. Keep going. Yeah, so... Um, so it's not, you might wonder, well, when is it, when will, you know, when will mortgage rates go up so high that homes become unaffordable? Okay. Right? Yeah. That's what kind of what is a good thing to know. And starts to either flatten out the market or maybe lower prices where people have to start lowering prices, right? Yeah, right. So what, what analysts are saying is that um, 5.75 to 6 is where it will, it may start to flatten out is what they're predicting, but it wouldn't go down at that point. So we have a long ways to go before, um, before we see home prices start to level out because they are still accelerating as long as we're under 5.75 to the 6% mortgage rates. So that the number I was looking up is, uh, <clears throat> I just thought would, I wanted your take on it was 6.5. So the 6.5 was roughly the rate at which mortgage, at the interest rate was uh, right before the market crash in 2008. Oh, uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But the difference is now that we printed so much money, it's a, it's a, and, and since prices have inflated so much more compared to 2008, obviously, uh-huh. right? Like the interest rate doesn't need to be that high to impact those large numbers, right? Oh, to impact. Oh, I see what you mean. So, I mean, are you kind of, um, you know, one question is, are we anticipating a 2008 style meltdown? Yes. Is what, I mean, that's, you know, what. what Everybody wants to know happen. that. Yeah. Or is that anticipated? Well. There's three things that um, fact are, are huge differences in why we wouldn't be expecting that, even okay. if mortgage rates got really high. Um, one thing is that right now, only about 1% of homeowners have um, adjustable rate mortgages. So in uh, pre in, well, in 2005, it was about 40%. Holy cow, seriously. Yeah, 40%. So that's an enormous difference. Yeah, 40% had adjustable rate mortgages. So, of course, as rates rose, mm-hmm. they all of a sudden couldn't make their payments. Mm-hmm. Now we, we'd only have 1% of people maybe in that position. Um, and and as we've talked about in a previous podcast, 30% of homes now are owned free and clear. That's sort of a, a median number nationwide. Um, so so that's the first factor is that less people have these risky loans to, to have to go into default. You know, a lot of people have secured very low interest rate loans. And then another factor is that uh, we've had so many years of a critically low housing supply in America. And we've have, we have so many people who have built a lot of wealth and built equity in their homes uh, over the past several years. At least they have a lot of wealth on paper in their homes. And uh, so to have a crash, we would have to, I mean, to have, you know, sort of a meltdown, we would have to have people go below, the home would have to drop below the price that they originally bought it for, you know, to to um, to make them go, to make them upside down on mm-hmm. the home, which would be very difficult to do now, now, know that so many people have so much equity in their homes um, over the past decade. And the third thing that, you know, would kind of uh, preclude this happening would be that, you know, we have... Um, a new class of institutional investors yeah. who want to buy houses and they're looking for any kind of sort of cracks in the market that they could come in and get a good buy. Uh, so we, so that's a new class of investors. It just, it has increased demand. These investors have increased demand. Mm-hmm. What, what kind of, so one statistic I, I keep hearing over and over again, which is a hundred percent true is that Basically, housing prices increased uh, on average across the United States about twenty percent last year. Mm-hmm. So, the, the, I think the biggest crash that ever happened in in per- percentage wise, as far as housing goes, was somewhere in like the thirteen point, I think thirteen percentage area, something like that. Um, but like, but prices are so high. Do you think we could see like a correction where it is like a twenty percent correction, and we kind of like wipe out a year of gains? Oh, well, that's an interesting question because, 
uh, if, if houses went down 20%, but would that even be possible? And you know these numbers. I mean, how, uh, right. So I think one thing you're asking is, are houses overvalued right now? Yeah. Because that's how we that's how we would see that drop is if they really were overvalued. Just like the stock market. Yeah. Um, so, well, okay, the S&P Global, this is uh, an index, they consider 88% of U- U.S. housing regions to be overvalued. Oh, okay. But I am questioning that because you know how much it costs per square foot to build a house. Right. Okay, and so I think in your area, so... Uh, in your area, you look at how much a house, an existing house is selling for and how much would it cost to build it. So in this area, so say a 2,000 square foot home for $600,000, that seems like a great deal compared to having to build that home, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So in that sense, how actually is it overvalued if it costs more to build it than to buy exist an existing home? Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. When you, when you think about it in that kind of context. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just to go back one more time, because I wanted to just really pound this uh, point into everybody's heads if they're listening and ears is that. So right now we're at basically average 4.75 percentage points yeah. to take out a new 30 year mortgage. Yeah. And you're saying that, <clears throat> and, and the experts are saying rather, um, and you're kind of filtering that information that like, it's it's going to take about five, you know, we need to get to like 5.75 or six around that area before maybe the housing market kind of flattens out and just, and we get back to what, like normal rates of return where we're talking maybe what per year? Oh, where typically homes uh, increase the exact amount of inflation. So oh. that's an interesting question, right? It's going to exactly. depend on how much inflation we have. So in, in, in the past, that's averaged out to 4% per year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we're hearing stuff like, uh, I think it was just 8% was, was the last figure that they gave us. But everybody, you know, the government is funny with their numbers, just like they're funny with money. You know, you've heard me rant on the podcast before that I think it's over, the real rate of inflation is over 10%. It's got to be. Because, um, I mean, people just look at their grocery bill, they look at their... The it, the house, the price the price that their neighbors have sold their house for... Uh, how prices for cars you know you name it gasoline gasoline ex- exactly so like th- this idea you know is it cherry picking to get it to only maybe seven eight percent probably um so that was in- that's interesting like if, that, if that's if that's what it boils down to then well then i mean um yeah what would make it crash to the point where and again like what does even crash mean like what does crash mean to you it, to me, it would mean that the value of your home is worth less than you owe on it, right? And that would be happen to you know a significant percentage of people. They're all of a sudden upside down on their homes. Yeah, right. That that would be a real crash. I think a decrease in value. What do you? Okay. I mean, it just goes down a little. But bit. But that's but that's coming from somebody who's literally a, you, a mortgage broker, a realtor, a professional. Uh, in the industry and, and not even to mention, but to mention like um, a a landlord, some, somebody who holds holds a, a fairly si- a fairly good sized portfolio of rental properties. Your, your view is much wider than everybody else's. I'm talking like, what about the ton- the person who sees this, like the tunnel person, the lay person, just the, the average person stooge on the street. <laughs> what does it mean to them? Like, what do you think it means to them? What does crash mean to them? What does a market crash mean? Yeah. Right. Pro- um, probably that uh, they're going to get a really great deal on a house because <laughs> everything is, has, everyone's walking away from their mortgages and they're going back to the banks and, and you're going to swoop in and get some fantastic deal. I think, I think that might mean, might be what it means. Yeah. What do you think? But I mean, uh, I think, I think they think, uh, I think they don't know how to articulate what you just articulated uh, prior to answering that last question, oh, okay. which was where you said, "Oh, it means somebody is completely underwater." Yeah. Let's say they. Let's say they. Let's say today their house is worth a million dollars, but they only owe five hundred thousand, and then tomorrow, just this is all crazy talk, but like tomorrow, all of a sudden it's only worth four hundred thousand. That. I yeah. think they are thinking, but they can't articulate that. Okay. Yeah. But that is like. That would that's highly unrealistic. It is highly unrealistic, right? And that's also the point where I think the crash is the point where you might think 
you know, maybe I should just rent. Maybe I should just walk away from this house, give it back to the bank, and I'm going to be better off renting than owning a house. Because why, why, would you, why would you say pay more on your mortgage than it would cost to rent a house? You know, you the, want to so what was that? it, the 30, 40% of people had arms before? Yeah. Okay, so 40% 40, 40 of people around 2005, is that yes. what it was? Okay, around 2005, what she's saying is 40% 40, 40 of people had adjustable rate mortgages, meaning that the, 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 mortgage, the, mortgage, the interest rate could just go up basically at any time they wanted to. I mean... Yeah, once a year, yeah. Okay, once a year. There's uh -huh. probably legal limits and all that stuff. Yeah. Do you, do you have any, maybe you don't know the statistic and I'm sorry if you're putting you on the spot, but like <clears throat> what, like within what time period were those 40%, those people, that number of people, let's say it was a hundred thousand people in the United States. Like when they got those mortgages, was it within only like a five year span or something? And why I'm oh, asking that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Here's where I'm going with that is like, maybe you don't know and it's okay, but like, I'm just playing out a thought experiment even for everybody is so l let's say it was within just the last, it, within five years of 2005. Yeah. Wouldn't that further prove that like, well, those people never had any much equity anyway. Oh, right. You know what um, I mean? Oh, if so they didn't arm? Yeah. Uh, it, well, it would depend. But, but one thing you're right about is the predatory lending was, was a, a severe problem leading up to the 2008 crash, right? I mean, people... Uh, Enabled by Freddie May and Fannie Mac, and ready, right? Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, well, we we didn't. So since then, we've had legislation to prevent predatory lending, um, where where you know, um, you know, people were just giving out loans. If you had a pulse, um, yeah, you could get much. a loan. And so now it's it's much more strict now. The money money supply is much tighter. We you know there's there's a much more um, regulation on pre qualifying people, um, and there's much more regulation on um, buyers being able to get out of their loan if you know are not having to go through with it if if they're you know thinking this is not the right loan for them for any reason. You know we have a lot of language in our contracts for buyers to get out of it. Um, so, so not only do we have like two safeguards, you know, you can, there's legislation against yeah. these predatory lending practices and, and legislation for people to, um, get out with any, any repercussions from a bad loan. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so I think you are right that that all would have happened in a short time frame. It had to have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So which, so like, again, we're, we're speculating. We don't know if it happened in a, in a short frame, time frame. But it seems like it it probably probably did, and so if it probably did, the point I was trying to make with that was is like, even if they even if it happened within like a five year period, let's give them some kind of a, a little bit of uh, grace to the whole situation. You're not paying much principal down in five years. You pay most right, of your principal. That's true. You may you pay you pay <laughs> most of your principal down. If you ever looked at like how it works, it's like the last five years of your mortgage. Yeah, yeah. The first like 25 years of your mortgage yeah even in a fixed rate it's like all interest mostly interest yeah yeah <laughs> yeah right so what, what you're i think what you're what you're saying is that people who were foreclosed <laughs> on well they they didn't lose a whole lot it's kind of what like, what, like i mean their credit their probably house, sucks they lost yeah. their house they had bad credit for seven years but the amount of money that they would have put down into that house may have been rather insignificant. Yeah, so it was probably the majority. Right, so it was probably easier for them to to walk away from it, and then it just further reinforces your point about the upside. This idea of a crash and like what a crash would truly mean is like people would have to be upside down. Well, those people didn't even have an opportunity, and now there's even less of an opportunity for them to be for people to be upside down in general. Yeah, right. Because they people are having to um, put down uh, at least three point five percent. There's no zero down payment anymore, when, and there used to be. Yeah, so now it's at least three point five percent. You know, if you think about an average home being you know six hundred thousand in our area, well, that's that's a large amount of money. You don't want to lose walk away from that. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I think I think you're right. So yeah, people people do anyway. The point is, people have a lot more equity in their home now, either from a higher down payment or from buying it, you know, within you know, three four years ago <laughs> or longer. So, so what if they? So okay. So let's say uh, let's say interest rates by the end of the year somehow got interest rates meaning uh, uh, on a thirty year mortgage got up to six yeah. percent. What happens in? What does that mean for somebody who's buying in quarter one of twenty twenty three? Do you think? 
as far and I'm 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 asking from a buyer's perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, like is it less competitive? Are they even though they're gonna have to they're gonna be paying more per month now, but is it gonna be like what is the was there an advantage to it or not? Yeah, that'll be it'll be interesting because I I I don't think there will be any advantage to waiting because uh, of the high demand we have and you know homes uh, in in let's, like in our area you know going up 22 percent in the last 12 months and then um, they say we have two weeks of inventory so what does that mean so unpack that yeah two weeks of inventory means that um, uh, it means that. Well, okay, how do I impact that? It, so a balanced market would be that we have about six months of inventory. So um, so we have, uh, ev like, every, it means that everyone um, who wants to buy a home right now, you know, they'd be able to find their home within about six months. But two weeks of inventory. Once they start looking. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but two weeks of inventory just means, means, means we have very little inventory. So we're not unpacking that very well. Okay. Does it mean this? Does it mean if I put my house in the market, it's going to be on there two weeks or less? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. That's, it's like, yeah, the amount of time it'd be on the market. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's actually what it means. Yeah. It, it's more like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, well, it's figured a little bit differently, but it means we have very little inventory. Yeah. And so we have such high demand that, so let's say in, in 2023, first quarter, you want to buy a house, interest rate is maybe 6%. And let's say prices have leveled somehow, like the, we're thinking they've leveled off. So that would mean that you're... What, what would that mean to you though? Like, I'm serious yeah. because I keep, every month I send her... Uh, it's so funny. Like I'll wake up and I will check Twitter or Facebook or something or LinkedIn doesn't matter. But like somehow something will come across my feed and it will be like houses in Denver just went up 9%. And then I email her before she gets up and then she re reads it and we both talk about it at dinner. You know what I mean? So like what would that mean in 2023? It Well, per when they're saying... Per month. You know what I mean? Oh, what, that like if like what is flattening in your mind is it is yeah. it finally bringing down home prices instead of increasing nine percent per month like they've been doing in Colorado I mean this is crazy but is it three I mean uh no it should it should mean just it increases at the rate of inflation well per then year. that's a lot still <laughs> <laughs> yeah one percent per month or something like that yeah it is a lot still I mean it, I mean it's it, it should mean flat, it's it's hard to imagine flattening out because right now when I'm um, you know making offers for buyers, we're always competing against you know it seems like an area area around you know four to eight other offers. Like okay, that kind of range per house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there. And then on yeah. average, what percent over listing is it still like 103, 104 percent over listing? Um, no, it's like, oh, 108 is about the average Jeez. in our area. That see, see the 8% are... is a reflection of inflation, right? Yeah, and, yeah. That, and that would be and that would be for homes in the last, you know, four to five weeks that closed. For people who are listening and they're like, how can people even do this? Because some people don't get it. Some people are like, how could people put down, uh, uh, how can people offer... I don't, they can't even fathom it. That's possible. Like I'm saying a $600,000 house in Longmont, but they're like, how did they offer $700,000? In other words, a hundred thousand dollars over like without naming names, obviously. Like, can you give me an example? Like what are people missing when they think about that equation? Are like, are they missing that? Like you, like you guys, you guys are, you guys are forgetting that this couple came from Florida. They lived in this house for 30 years and they sold it and they basically can pay that kind of cash over. Like, like, how do people get to that level? Yes. There's two ways that people are coming up with what we call money for an appraisal gap. So that is mm. the amount of cash you need to meet the gap between the appraisal price and the purchase price. Because you're seeing, because you're seeing houses on the most. Are, are you seeing when most houses get listed, like they are going, they're they're getting listed appropriately? They're getting listed according to the most recent sale. Yeah. Yeah, which would be appropriate, and then they're getting bid up according to um, demand. So, right. So, say, so say it's a six hundred thousand dollar house, and then you bid six sixty, and you win it. So you need to come up with sixty thousand, most then, likely. Yeah. So one way they're doing it is how one way people are doing this is uh, if they 
If they have parents that are older but still living, they're getting money from an older generation, from their parents, from grandparents. They're getting uh, a so-called gift. I don't know if they're actually paying it back. They, they might have a side agreement to pay it back. Sure. Um, and then the other way is that they are selling houses in states like um, California that has very high real estate values. And and they, they may be they have a lot of equity, so they have the cash. They're just coming from an area that has higher real estate values. They've sold something, and they're they're buying. It's a it's a second or third home purchase of their life for yeah. them yeah. Mm-hmm, to come up with that. Okay, so if if houses are getting listed, uh, you know, basically where they need to be, yeah, and then um, based on you know the most recent uh, sales within a neighborhood or whatever, yeah. Then, but then they're going for these 108, 910 percent or whatever over listing. Yeah. Like, does it make you think houses are overvalued, or do you just point right back to no? Nope, it's just a reflection of inflation. And demand. oh, okay, I'll answer that. But I wanted to point out one a third way that sure. people get this money for cash over are bonuses. Um, I see a lot of people oh, really? coming to the area, and they they get a bonus for moving to the area from from these tech companies, and these bonuses are. Um, tens of thousands of dollars. They're they're a very significant amount of money. So I see a lot of bonuses, or maybe a yearly bonus. So in 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 our area with the tech industry, yeah, people get those. Um, okay, and so do I think the houses are overvalued when someone uh, is paying uh, eight ten percent over? Yeah. Uh, no, because I've we've been because then that's going to set the precedent for how much the next, next home one, yeah. is priced at, and you know this, and so. Yeah. So um, you're going to be, you know, I was just telling uh, one of my buyers today who was, he was worried about this, the same thing. Well, why should I, why should I pay more than the appraisal value for this home? And he was very, you know, he was really thinking about it a lot. And, and I said, I think you're, I said, I pointed to another house in the same neighborhood for sale for, an, and, but, but just um, for sale this weekend for the same price that he um, bought his home for, which because he won a bidding war, then the same house went up for sale for the same price he actually bought is buying the home for. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I said once that house sells, then that's how much your house is worth. Right. You know, <laughs> so you're going to be underwater for about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you live with that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, and that's that's how it goes. You'll be underwater for you know three weeks or a month. I think it's for some reason though. Even though we keep we do these episodes periodically, you and I, it's like it's like I still people still cannot wrap their heads around just the whole, that the, all of this. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. So uh-huh. they just it's just difficult for them. And I guess you know I'm trying to be empathetic here. I'm like, oh, maybe you're just not talking about it every day like we are. And oh, that sort of thing. Well, let me let me ask you. And uh, so, will you give the viewers the number of how much it costs to build per square foot? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right now in Colorado, uh, at April tenth, twenty twenty two, I would say you need to start budgeting for about three hundred and fifty a square foot. So three hundred fifty dollars per square foot, and then I'm selling for a, your basic house. Yeah, and I'm selling plenty of two thousand uh, square foot homes for between. You know, like right around maybe six hundred for two thousand square feet. Yeah, it's three hundred. Yeah. So I think I think then you know that's why I told people. Well, you can't build this house again. You literally can't for this much money. I mean, we just proved it because the quick math was three hundred bucks a square foot. If she's selling a two thousand square foot house for yeah. six 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 hundred thousand. Now, now that was just rough math and all that, mm-hmm. but yeah. yeah, it's the truth. And honestly, <laughs> I heard somebody. Uh, there was another contractor that told me. Just last week, so I might need to revise this number, that three fifty number, uh, to maybe four hundred or four fifty, and Ooh. I know uh, f- specifically for the Louisville, uh, the Marshall Fire victims. Um, so Louisville, if, it, if people don't know, is in Boulder County. Boulder County is a very elite county in terms of just the 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 companies, the people, and the incomes. Like it is what it is. It's a very expensive place to live and build and live. Just all that buy. Yeah. Okay. You might have so to you're increase even, that. Yeah. You're even in better shape then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, buying an existing home and maybe you have to fix ten thousand dollars worth of stuff. Um, still, you're 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 walking away with with a, a a good asset there. Yeah. Yeah. Radical. Yeah. 
Um, we kind of already talked about home prices, how much they went up the last month. I already, I said I said twenty percent, but I, if was that a wrong number or was that a correct number? Is so um, about how much home prices have went up in the last twelve months? Yeah, I think um, right. I think maybe you're looking at uh, maybe more of a statewide or something like nationwide. Nationwide. Okay. Yeah, because in so for Denver Metro, it was 22% in okay. the last 12 months. Yeah, uh-huh. that's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Yeah. And <laughs> and uh, the year before, it was right around the same amount. Yeah. Right. So people are seeing, you know, for their house to go up 40% or so. Um, people are seeing gains that would have taken 10 years but in two years. Well, and that, and then what I was looking up while she was uh, talking was I just looked at the year chart for the Dow Jones, and uh, the year chart is saying um, that basically we've kind of just went sideways. So, like, right now we're at 30... So, Dow Jones Industrial is at 34,721 as of this Sunday. It was at, the same time last year, 33,800. So it's only went up like a thousand points. Um, so like, what is that percentage wise divided by through three, eight hundred? It's like 2%. <laughs> two percent. Two percent. Two percent year over year. Dow Jones Industrial. Yeah. You and know. if you've had a bond. Um, oh, you're losing money. Yeah. You're, you're negative. You're literally. No, yeah. no. Yeah, exactly. hundred here, yeah. percent. Here, here's why you're negative. Peter Schiff says this all the time, right? Like he's like, let's just pretend that uh, a bond. I can't remember what the the notes are right now and how much they're worth, but like let's say a ten year bond is worth, uh, you can get two percent. Well, if inflation is eight percent, you're underwater by six percent. Yeah, you're, that's how got that because your you right? just your money is worthless. And so if you had a hundred thousand dollars in there and you want to take it out now, you lost six thousand. Yeah, yeah, which is is really rough. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that's why we have this new class of institutional investors that are coming in to buy homes because that's that's where the smart money is right now is going into real estate and yep. driving up demand even further. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's kind of wrap this up with, uh, I would love, I think everybody would love to hear, what tips do you have uh, for people who are obtaining a mortgage right now? Yeah. If, if you're, and then ultimately a house. Right. If you're looking at getting pre-approved for a mortgage so that you can buy a home, um, what you're looking for is you want to get the the time frame is very important. So to explain that, um, you want to be able to close your loan as quickly as possible. So the company I'm with, we can do it in uh, 15 to 21 days because I've, I've run into this problem with a, a client who really wanted to get a loan from through Bank of America. Bank of America is going to take 35 days to close a loan. And then I said, I was talking to the, the lender, what's the quickest you could do this? Maybe 30. Mm-hmm. And that is not going to fly if you're making an offer on a house and you're in a competitive situation. So time is the most important thing under right con- now. So once you guys, are, so with the houses you've gotten a contract, well, how about this? The, con- the houses that you've closed on, uh-huh. let's say in the last... Since you become a mortgage broker and then uh-huh. the ones you've done deals on, um, are you guys closing faster than 30 days then? From- yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that has really changed and that has changed Why is it going, in 2022. Is the Making it shorter? Yeah. On your end? Yeah. How, why? And how How and why are you guys doing oh, I mean, how, how are you guys doing this? Well, and, how and are we doing it, it is, is we are having to keep up with, we are, we're, you know, we're all trying to outdo each other with, to get oh. our buyers under contract. So we have to do what needs to be done. We have to streamline the process as much as possible. We have to have more help in underwriting, more help in processing. Uh, we can't, and, and this, these are things that larger companies like Bank of America hasn't done. Mm. So they don't have, they don't have an enough, um, you know, people working on the underwriting, working on the the different things that need to happen to the application to get that approval. So yeah, everyone, everyone has had to streamline their processes to get their buyers under contract to, to get any business because that's, who's winning these bidding competitions are people who have a very short time frame. So let's say, so, okay. So let's say, let's say somebody is, um, working with a realtor and they're hearing this. It's like, how, what like how do let's say they're out of state mm-hmm. like are they just shopping around for other mortgage brokers and they're just like asking them a sp- specific question yeah the specific question is how many days does it take for you to close a loan and what do you think they should be asking for 
like the t- you you should be as you, you should get it down between um 15 to 21 days that is so fast it's so fast and and you're gonna have to pay that's for like that a cash deal almost right because that's because we need to compete you need to compete with the cash buyers and uh, so that's what you want. You want the time. And if, if you're going to pay more for appraisal fees um, or if you're going to pay more for any other kinds of fees, like with my company, you don't pay more for the fees. But um, like if you're out of state and you need this, you know, you need to do this, uh, you you would consider paying more for fees for a fast closing. Um, just and, and you will pay more for the appraisal um, to have it done to be, to be top of the list. Um, and you will do this because if houses are going up, say, um, you know, 2% per month or more, like they did in February, they went up what, 9 or 10%. Yeah, uh, it was 9, yeah. Yeah, 9%. Uh, it's worth it. Whatever you need to pay to get that fast closing time to win the bidding situation is what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah, because you're just going to pay more for the a sa- the similar house in that neighborhood the next month. Crazy. Yeah. Um. Beautiful. Well, if people are listening who are potentially thinking about moving to our area um, and are interested in working with you, uh, tell us how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, let's see. So uh, you can uh, check me out on my YouTube channel, Greater Boulder Longmont uh, Colorado Homes. And uh, you can also uh, look at my website, uh, Colorado Real Estate for You. And I'd be so happy to help any of your listeners, Lance, and uh, give them really good service. Beautiful. Okay. Well, thanks so much, as always, for being on the show and unpacking. Like, for me, this is all fascinating stuff always. I just love talking about money, investments, uh, and forecasting, you know, the future and thinking, you know, with using some past precedents and everything. So thanks so much. Oh, thanks, Lance. And thanks, John Kyle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's it.